Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. We're in the sports section. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> you know, some fighters have entourages. I'm not talking about just the guys they hang with in the real world. I'm talking about here online as well. Whenever I mention Timothy Bradley's name, at least two or three people always comment that they thought Bradley lost his fight against Manny Pacquiao. As an aside, I thought Bradley won that fight. But there is the heavy duty Manny Pacquiao crowd that firmly believes that Pacquiao got robbed in that match. <clears throat> if you want to see about that Timothy Bradley may have lost. You need to look at his fight against Ruslan Provoknikov. Now let me just say this. You know, the referee calls a slip where it looks like Bradley may have been battered to the canvas. You need to understand that two of the three judges had Bradley winning that fight by only one round. I thought Timothy Bradley won the fight. Perhaps I'm biased toward Timothy Bradley, but I will say the Ruslan Provotnikov crowd has an argument, especially since their guy put Bradley down at the end of the fight. Certainly, the Provotnikov-Bradley fight, in my opinion, was much closer than the Pacquiao-Bradley fight. Well, now Ruslan Provodnikov is going to Denver, Colorado to face native son Mike Mile High Alvarado. The last time we saw Mike Alvarado, he was finishing up his second war with Brandon Rios, and he was doing it going away. One of the things you need to keep an eye on in this fight, <clears throat> in fact, I believe it's one of the stories of the fight, is Mike Alvarado's stamina. It's exemplary. It has lifted him in numerous fights, notably the Breeders Prescott fight, right? It allowed him, quite frankly, to hit the gas toward the end of the Brandon Rios rematch. I like Mike Alvarado to win this fight. I think Alvarado has a few things in his favor. One of them is his stamina. Another is the fact that Ruslan Provotnikov weighed more than 146 pounds when he fought Timothy Bradley at welterweight. And this fight is being fought at 140 pounds. Now I'll agree that Provotnikov's only 29 years old. He's in that sweet spot where guys might be able to lose weight. But when you couple a weight loss with Denver's high altitude, Against a fighter with above average stamina, in my opinion, <clears throat> you're asking for trouble. Let me also point out to the obvious, right? The fight is in Denver, Mike Alvarado's backyard. Mike Alvarado is mile high Mike Alvarado, right? You can imagine there are going to be more Alvarado fans rooting for the hometown favorite. Then there will be Ruslan Provotnikov fans, right? Another problem Provotnikov has, quite frankly, <clears throat> is that Provotnikov doesn't move as well as Mike Alvarado does. I know Alvarado's a big-time puncher. I know Mike Alvarado can certainly, you know, fight from the trenches. But Alvarado can also move. I thought that was one of the stories and how he handled Brandon Rios, right? Alvarado was able to move a little bit more than Rios, who's a straight line fighter, right? Well, understand, <clears throat> Timothy Bradley, for some odd reason, <clears throat> decided not to move in the first two rounds against Richland Provotnikov. That's why Provotnikov looks so good. During that fight, you're gonna see that Joel G. Diaz, a great trainer who trains Timothy Bradley, is yelling at Bradley because Diaz wants movement from Bradley, right? There's no secret on how to beat Ruslan Provotnikov. You've got to move a little bit because Provotnikov 
doesn't move that well. His foot speed isn't exemplary. So I believe that Mike Alvarado, who actually can move when he needs to, can actually move, stick a jab. He actually has a pretty good jab that he usually lands more than 20% of the time. I believe he can move, stick a jab, keep Avotnikov turning, and bank rounds. Right? Let me also say, too, that these guys had a common opponent, Mauricio Herrera. Mike Alvarado, quite frankly, looked better against Mauricio Herrera than did Richland Provodnikov. I thought both of these guys won. Officially, though, the judges gave, in my opinion, um, Herrera a gift victory over Provodnikov. Just listen to how surprised Teddy Atlas the color analysts on the telecast is when they announce the decision, right? But just understand that even if you thought Provodnikov beat Herrera, he didn't look as good doing so as Mike Alvarado did. Also, don't be fooled by size, right? Mike Alvarado is actually the bigger man. Provodnikov is two to three inches shorter than Mike Alvarado. That'll give Given the slow foot speed that Provodnikov has, that should give Alvarado even more of an opportunity to hit and move, right? And uh, let me just say, too, Alvarado, I know he fights at 140, but if you go to BoxRec.com right now, and if you read up on his fight against Breedis Prescott, you're going to see that on fight night, Mike Alvarado weighed 157 pounds. Folks, he's a big man, right? Understand, too, that Timothy Bradley's 5'6". So Provotnikov against Bradley lined up perfectly. It suited Provotnikov when they were in close. But Mike Alvarado is bigger than Timothy Bradley, right? If you add it all up, to me, it adds up to a Mike Alvarado victory. But understand that Ruslan Provotnikov is a puncher. As Timothy Bradley, who slipped to the canvas, who later fell to the canvas, found out, Ruslan Provotnikov can put you down. Right? You need to hedge the play. Right? You know I'm a hedger. I expect Mike Alvarado to win the fight. If a hedge is possible, and I haven't seen the odds, I would hedge the play with Provotnikov by KO. If you want to hedge it further, just Provotnikov by KO in the early part of the fight. If you're a prop better, I would try to get Provotnikov by KO for the first nine rounds of the fight. Normally, you can get it in three-round increments, right? One to three. Four to six, seven to nine, right? I believe that after the ninth round, if Mike Alvarado, who's a strong finisher, is still on his feet, he's going to take this baby home and win the match either by late KO or by decision, right? I expect Mike Alvarado to win this fight. I'm hedging the play with Ruslan Provotnikov by KO. I think the difference between these two is that Alvarado is the better finisher. Alvarado moves better. Alvarado is fighting in his hometown. Alvarado has a size advantage on Provodnikov. He should be able to stay away from Provodnikov, outbox him, move a bit, have the crowd on his side, and rack up the points. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.